Now, with the uh, first MacBook Pro, the one without the touch bar, iFixit found something very strange, and I'm very curious what Kyle Weems has found. He's on the line with us right now from iFixit.com, one of our great sponsors, and uh, the kings of teardown. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Leo. You have torn down which, the 15 or the 13? Uh, I've got I've got all three here actually. So we we did the 13 with uh, with function keys, and then we did the 13 with the touch bar, and then we got the 15. So we Let got me ask you because I was kind of shocked when I read your teardown of the first 13 that these speaker grills on the left and right aren't actually speaker grills. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I've, I've got that I've got that here. This is pretty cool. All right. So what are, what are this they? Is the, this is the 13. Yeah. And this is where the speaker is, and and you can see on this side there's no holes all the way through. <laughs> uh, where over here, this is where the little tweeter goes. So the only holes, there's only a few holes on it, and this is this is a tweeter speaker, and it sits in right here, and there's like 25 holes, just just from here to here that allow the tweeter out, and the rest of it, they're all cosmetic. It's cosmetic. Now is that true on the Touch Bar 13 as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's the. But Leo, they lighten no, the no, case. No, I'm sorry. On the, on the, on the touch bar, the speakers are, are up on top. So, okay, so that's what bar, I thought because I, I the, took Lisa's. Th this is the touch bar one. Okay, so, so this is the touch bar one. It's got the tweeters and the speakers are down below. So on the touch bar models, it's cosmetic. On the function key models, uh, they're not cosmetic. They go all the way wait through, minute, like on the previous. It's the one. other way around. So I misunderstood. So the, the, this model with the touch bar, these speaker grills are just holes in the case. They don't actually connect to sound. Right. The sound comes out on these vents on the bottom. Is that right? That's it. Uh, oh. and, and yeah, you, you'd think that the vents on the bottom were, were for airflow. They may primarily be there now for, for acoustics. <laughs> and, and the speakers the speakers are interesting. I mean, this is this is the speaker unit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, this is just a plastic block of air. So all of the modeling is in the geometry, not necessarily in the physical physical manufacturing of it. That is very, uh, and, very and yeah, strange. they've got a tweeter on either side, which is kind of cool. And the audio sounds really good, uh, but it's just not done how you'd expect. So wait, does that mean that when you're in bed with your laptop on the bed sheets, it's going to block <laughs> the sound? You know, I haven't done extensive in bed modeling with it. Like we took this laptop apart. <laughs> that should be a natural part of testing. The moment we... <laughs> yeah, let's get in bed with the MacBook Pro. All right. Well, I'm gonna because I have to say I think the sound is is pretty good. Let me. Uh, Play some. This is on the 15. Now, is the 15 the same configuration, or does are these actually speakers here? Yes. No. The 15 is exactly the same. So I've got the board for the 15, and I've got the 15 here. You're making me cry. What they put these holes here for? Is it well, ventilation? Funny, you know, John, Johnny has always done stuff like that. On the uh, Do you remember on the white MacBooks? Yeah. Uh, the white MacBooks had some screws that were extraneous that were just there for symmetry. They didn't actually <laughs> hold anything. Right. <laughs> I, I was thinking how good the sound was, but you're telling me it's coming out of the, the it's vent. It's coming out of the bottom. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So oh. we, were, we were joking that the holes might be just there for light waiting. Yeah, well, it doesn't remove enough in aluminum for it to probably <laughs> make any difference. Wow, I am I am bummed. I am really bummed. Let me, let me just... Okay. Well, I mean, look, look, if they hadn't put those there, people would say, well, what Where's happened to the, the speaker sound? grill? Well, they got rid of the speaker grill, and they would freak out. So this is just Apple easing people into the next generation uh, of Mac. And I have to say, I, the sound is not is good coming out of here. I mean, let me play something with some uh, some heavy bass. <laughs> Don't laugh. All right, let me turn it, and let me turn it up. And by the way, the way you turn it up, of course, is you press this button, and then it opens up the slider. So it's two button presses ah, there now. there we go. It's too complicated. It's too complicated. But I think this sounds good. It's not coming out of there. Cover up the vent. <laughs> it's macro size. All right. You know, I didn't get the Hawaiian shirt. You're right. It's, it's coming. It's coming out of here. I can because I can cover it up. Oh yeah yeah. All right. What else do we? <laughs> So Johnny does that. It's cosmetic. It makes it look pretty. It makes look pretty. And, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, all the way through. I mean, nobody else's boards look like this. The the dark blue color that they use on the boards, I mean, that's, that's distinctive to Apple. Isn't that interesting? Apple, Even though nobody, nobody but the tech is ever going to see that. There's a lot of techs out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's the back of the cabinet. Now, one thing that we've heard is that everything is soldered down. There's nothing 
you can't upgrade anything, right? Yeah, and, and on, on the uh, model with function keys, you actually can. So the SSD is modular on the uh, oh, oh. function keys. So if you uh, want to upgrade the to SSD, okay, just now there's a reason to get the one with the, the, the track bar, with yeah. the touch bar. Go ahead, Kyle. What about upgradability? So it's not just about upgradability. Actually, last week my I, I used a 2012 MacBook Pro, right. uh, and it uh, finally the GPU failed after I've been, I've been using it you know, nonstop, 16 hours a day for four years. Uh, so I was able to take the drive out of that machine, throw it in another machine, and I was good to go. I didn't have any downtime. I didn't have any data loss. But if you had this unit and you've got the integrated – We've got the integrated SSD, right? You're, you're toast. If, if a piece fails or if you trip over the power plug and break the USB port and the computer doesn't turn on anymore, there's no way to recover your data off of this. And that's what Where Apple's done. Even popular... in the 2012 MacBook Pro, they replace large segments. They don't do little piece-by-piece piece fixes. But, but you the, at the least... The hard drive is modular. Yeah, and, and with, with the help of iFixit and the manuals and the parts you can get there... You at least could do it yourself, not with this one, not with the new one, unless you're very good at removing surface mount parts. Oof. Right. You're pretty much not. Yeah, even I think if, anybody would be able to take this apart and replace the whole board, but that board's going to be so expensive that you're going to have a hard time getting your hands on one. Right. Right. That's, yeah, well, because that yeah. board is everything. It's the SSD. It's the processor. Is that the logic the board there? That, that yes, this is the main board, and this has this has the USB ports on the side of it. Yeah, that's um, too bad. And and that's that's something I'm really kind of concerned about is is where we're going to go. Uh, you know, if you're talking, you've got the these integrated USB-C ports that don't have MagSafe anymore. We break them and, and you've got a problem. Yeah. Uh, what else have we learned by tearing these down? By the way, when you tear something like this down, can you put it back together again? <laughs> yes, we can. And okay. we uh, everything on here is is functional. We didn't have a very good time pulling the batteries out. But we got them out, and you'll note the batteries are these five five separate cells. Are they all glued uh, in? So prime, yeah, they're all glued in. This is this is the glue here. It's just yeah. a tremendous amount of adhesive all along it. We, you know, if we give something a one out of ten on the repairability chart, that means we spent hours and hours very carefully prying and heating, and uh, it's it's not a fun process for us. Yeah, and prying and vindictive. heating a lithium ion cell is it's not the so scary. Yeah, you don't really want to do that. Right. So you gave this a one out of ten. Is that as low as you can go on repairability? Um, you could go to zero, I guess. Like the, the, <laughs> the iPod Shuffle is probably a zero. Well, just what would a product need to be zero? Like it's made out of thermite. <laughs> yeah, the, the Apple uh, Pencil is pretty close to that, and yeah. the uh, the the Magic Touch Pads, where there's no way to replace the battery at all. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're we're pretty much there. This is One this is really out rough. Of 10. Oh, well, I can remove the trackpad, so, yeah. You can. There you go. And, yeah, the trackpad is super easy to replace. You've got this big piece. You can see how big it is relative to my hand. It's massive. And here's the opposite side of it. And we've got the uh, the Taptic engine. Uh, so this is these are these copper coils are what vibrate it when you click. It doesn't physically move at all when you when you push it. It's just it's just the Taptic vibration making you feel like it clicked. Uh, and this is this is a massive coil. And this whole thing is easy. Now I'm not. I've never actually broken just the trackpad on a laptop, but if it, if you did break it, this would be easy. This I'm sure it happens. Did you look at the keyboard and compare it to the MacBook keyboard? Could you tell us? Yes, it was we did. And it's definitely a different, a new, different mechanism. Okay. Um, and one thing I can I can share because I was I was hearing you you talk earlier, and I think that. Part of what you're reacting to is the additional noise. Yes. So you're saying it yeah. feels like it, it doesn't right. cut off as early. I think they intentionally made it a lot louder. Yeah. And even if it doesn't have more travel, the right. noise and it's, that impact makes it feel to you. I feel like it's psychological. And that's fine. I mean, is it a physical well, noise or is it created by the haptic engine? No, it's absolutely. So this, this, this unit is off, right? And I've got the microphone kind of cranked up, so you should be able to hear it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's still tappity tap. So are they using different switches? What are they doing now? Yeah, so it's it's a new switch, and I'm actually kind of concerned. I don't know if I'd want somebody working next to me using this laptop. Yeah, it's loud. It's really loud. Yeah, it's very loud. I'm not computing to make friends, though. So, <laughs> but but, 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 but psychologically, I've got, I've got my 2012 here, and and I'm typing, and you can't hear anything. Yeah, but that um, but that that doesn't have that full support spring that doesn't. On the older laptop, the keys wobble a little bit, which I like, and feels like it's traveling more. Right. Um, no, and, and they absolutely they are traveling. They're traveling four times as far. So there you go. Wow. 
Okay. I don't know why, but the click makes me feel like I'm less stub, less like stu you know, stubbing my fingers. I think you had it right. There's a stick. psychology here. That's psychology. It's the satisfaction yeah. of the key press. Yeah. Still the butterfly keys, but there, that's kind of a newer switch on those. I wonder if this isn't Tim Cook. I almost think Tim Cook is more bullish on the iPad than than Johnny is. And I think he's convinced we're all going to be on glass at some point. And yes. so the design team are kind of following what he's saying. But I, think I don't think right. any of the rest of us like typing on iPads. Right. No, I think you're exactly right. In fact, I'd be willing to bet, and we've talked about this before, Horace Steady, you wrote a very good piece in, on Asimco saying app, the reason Apple doesn't have a touchscreen and never will have a touchscreen is that they feel like the future is on iOS and their touch devices. And they just keep the Mac along because there's still stuff you can't do on iOS that you could do on a MacBook. But as soon as that difference is gone, as soon as you could do everything you want to do on an, I, on an iPad, they're just going to get rid of these entirely. This is, they don't see this as the future of the company. This is a legacy product. They're more than happy to cut loose.